Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Sega Addicts After Hours Episode 2. I'm your host... We have a name now! We have a name! (laughs) Hallelujah! Uh, I'm your host, Scotty Moe, and uh, the reviews editor for the site, and with me tonight is Brett Hatfield, the owner of the site. Welcome to the Hobo Castle. (laughs) In its finest. And uh, also, features editor, we have Stevie Grant. I'm feeling very exhausted right now, (laughs) listeners. I've had a horrible long weekend, so I may be a little bit crazy on this episode. We will see. That's all right. Crazy crazy can be a good thing. (coughs) Okay, we will have to find out. um, There's a whole trove of surprises out there, Josh. Josh! Oh, oh no! I'm wow! Getting, the first no, signs. I'm wow. getting I'm getting influences from uh, the other podcast that I did. Oh god, <laughs> it's all happening again. When you yeah, you must be just going in a force of habit now. Because when was the last time you even recorded with him? Um, well, we did the last <clears throat> episode of that. So yeah. <clears throat> Um, all right, well, uh, so we'll just kick it off here. Brett, what are you playing right now? Well, I was playing uh, Gran Turismo 6. That's about all I've really played. In the last few days I've been kind of sick and just really worn out from work, so today's the first day I've really had any time to play anything for the entire week. <clears throat> Life gets in the way. Or, I guess, near death, in your case. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you tell us about your near-death experience, then? That sounds like fun. So that's what you've been playing, the, the yeah. cold medicine or something. I don't know what you have. Yeah, I woke up uh, woke up yesterday, and I couldn't breathe, like, hardly at all. And then, like, midway through my shift at work, I started getting, like, a nasty, nasty headache. And oh. I thought this was going to be a fun, exciting story, not a oh. vaguely depressing one. <laughs> Say so you're all better to... now, let's move on. You had to yeah, tap yeah, but... Had to tap X rapidly in the morning to start breathing, and then you. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> Ironically, that took much too much out of him, so he had to go to hospital anyway. <laughs> well, like I was just cleaning some frames at work, and that shouldn't take anything at all. And I was winded by like the fifth row of frames I was doing, so it was. It was hmm. really bad, but I'm be- I am better now. So it has a. Happy ending for me, mildly depressing for everybody else. And this then, might be the last time you people see Brett alive. Yeah, yeah. God. Imagine that. Life it would just be a podcast with me and Scotty. Can you imagine <laughs> that? I can't. <laughs> um, okay, all right. Well, so... Hey, well, we still have Alex. We do, which... Uh, um, sorry he's not with us tonight, viewers and listeners. Um, he'll be with us next week, though, but he sends his best. He's... Uh, He's not in the infirmed, but he's not doing his best, so no worries. He'll be back, though. Um, so, Stevie, what are you playing right now? Um, well, for Press Pause Radio, I reviewed uh, Payday 2, the popular multiplayer title on Steam that's everyone's talking about. Cool. Have you played it or heard of it? Uh, I know of it only because they uh, that I, I work in retail and they were shorted copies majorly when it came out like nobody could have nobody could get their hands on a physical release that's the only reason I really know about the game at all what about you Brett? I have not heard of it until about 30 seconds ago actually so okay. I should I show how much I keep up with things I guess well it's kind of similar um, with Left 4 Dead in the way that it's about four player co-op um, and that's the only thing really about it mechanically wise um, is that it's a single player game it's not that good like Left 4 Dead if you've ever played solo Left 4 Dead it's just not as good um, so in that way it's kind of the same but instead of just shooting as many things as you can you're uh, doing bank heists and they're really cool and inventive and they, it really works. It's got a lot of replay value. There are a couple of RPG elements, and it's really, really fun uh, to plan out a uh, heist and execute it. It's really fun. Is it safe to say that it's like one of the most fun aspects of GTA, but made better? Yeah, and expanded on because it's its own game. It's not a smaller part of a much bigger game. Right. That's As cool. was the case with Grand Theft Auto V, which I felt the bank heists were pretty flimsy. I didn't like them that much. Yeah, I can, 
I don't know if I could ever get into something like that because I just don't know enough people that are online consistently enough to play something like that, you know? I would play this with you. We could all, if we could get from our PCs, we could all do it. Sure. I don't... Uh, well, it's on Xbox, sure actually. It's on Xbox 360. It. We could easily do that, Scotty. Okay. Sounds good to me. <laughs> Honestly, I say this because it's just a, a very fun game, and I haven't played with any friends or anything, so you know, mm -hmm. I would like to play with someone I know to pull off a nice heist. Is there like a PC or a PS3 released for it, or? Uh, yeah, it's on both. Oh, sweet! I'll have to try it out. Then. Actually, it's more of a PC game if anything. I reviewed this on PC. Oh, okay. Yeah. Huh. Cool. Yeah, I'll have to look into that. I, I was always curious about it, but it's, yeah, it's it's something I'd only play. I mean, like Left 4 Dead, same thing. I I never, I don't think I've ever played that game single player. Mm. But, yeah, it's just not that good. Yes, yeah. the whole thing is based around it, and there are a couple of like just long and a little bit boring stages in um, Payday 2, but it's covered by the multiplayer, and that the multiplayer works. Like, for example, they do waves of enemies after waves of enemies, and it's a bit too much um, at one point, but then you realize that you can do it another way, um, and nothing will happen at all. So it's just a case of you having to just be a good planner and uh, be sneaky to pull off um, the ultimate job. Cool. The ultimate job. Yeah. <laughs> do you say that in your review? No. But oh, okay. it, it's very fun. <laughs> and if you want to know what else I thought about it, you can go to Press Pulse Radio. I'm not going to tell you the score I gave it this time. <laughs> but so you've learned from your mistake. Yes, I have. <laughs> nice. Have you played uh, anything else? Um, I've been so busy that it's probably just that. And a little bit more Max Payne 3. Yeah. Oh, no, actually, one thing was that out of the blue, um, I decided just because I was flicking through the Xbox titles that I had still downloaded, I thought, oh, I haven't played Res for a while, and, well, the truth is that I actually have played it a couple of months ago. I find that game incredibly easy to dive back into, even though it's so short. I just mm -hmm. love the stages, and there's nothing else like it, just style-wise. Yeah, yeah. So I replayed the final level of that game, which is the best level in that game, and the longest one. It's a really nice level and piece of music it's about evolution and it goes through all the stages of life I don't think I've I didn't I never got that or no actually I've it's only the played the demo level. and I then I bought the game but I haven't actually sat down with the game yet but oh, I like it it's fun hey, you should you should fix that honestly it's so good <laughs> that's a problem it's um, it's very short as well you could play the first couple of levels in very short blasts and it's just a fun game to play yeah. I, I think you didn't enjoy it a lot since you like I mean you're a musician yourself do you like music games or rhythm games? It really depends like I'm pretty much tired of Rock Band and Guitar Hero but I love the rhythm yeah. games like uh, oh, no. oh you well, were talking about Hazumi Miku yeah like That's like cool. Miku I think even if it even if it didn't star a disgustingly cute anime girl and have really catchy tunes I would still dig it but like Rhythm Thief which we'll talk about in a second in the news I really dug that and um Res I do like because it's like Panzer Dragoon meets uh, uh, whatever the we were just talking about Tron, basically every rhythm almost. game yeah yeah it's got yeah. a lot of Tron in it uh, visually it does yeah like I I really like it when shows did the whole you are inside the internet type thing and it just yeah. be like glowing lines it's like playing that basically. Yeah, yeah, it's like Johnny. I, it's yeah. like Johnny Mnemonic, but better. You, I thought you were about to say Johnny Quest. Is, or something. No, well, it could be that too. The the, the ones that were on like the series. yeah, insanely better. Brett, have oh you played gosh. Res? I'm I have not played it in years. I had uh, a demo of it. Oh, in so. years. Okay. I'm gonna plug this then real quick. There's a collection for uh, Xbox 360. It's called Cubed. It has Res and two other games that that company made. You can find it for like five bucks. Do that. Oh wow! Uh, what else is in it? Um, actually, give me a second, and I'll go grab the box. Oh, Walking yeah, it's over a box. to my video games. Move giant Optimus Prime mask. This um, is a great song. Yeah, we got a uh, top the chart, Joe. So, look at that! It's really cheap, guys. It's only that much. 
Damn, and son. Oh, Luminous. Giant, giant okay. glare. Yeah, Luminous, Live, and E4, which is Every Extend, Extra Extreme, and then oh, Resident. Oh, that's a good game, so. yeah. Is yeah, there a PS3 version, or is that just Xbox? No, I don't think... Um, I think one of these games wasn't released. On, is Res on PS3? It should be, since it was released on PS2. Or, I mean, is it on PSN? That's what I meant to say. I'm not sure. That was later. the sequel, so maybe. I'm not sure. Yes, no, maybe so. I'm not sure either. I know it was, um, on, I know it was on PS2. But yeah. I never could find it. But, well, uh, um... I think yeah, try to be... grab that collection if you haven't played Res, viewers and listeners as well. Yeah. So I played that, um, and that's a great game. I'm trying to think if I played anything else. Um... We started to talk about Hotline Miami before we recorded, but I haven't really... Oh yeah, well then, is that in your recent games? Mm, not really, but it's an awesome game. Yeah, well, um, <coughs> well, actually, the Vita version came out a while ago. I was playing that, and I still play that every time I... Um, well, actually, I haven't played it recently either, I think, just because I was playing it so intensely for a while. Because it's yeah. such an addictive game, it's really fun. Yeah, it's it's one of those games where it's like... Well, what the best thing is, when you die... Well, I guess we should explain it if no one's <laughs> played it before, but it's a top-down view like the old-school um, Grand Theft Autos and uh, or the more recent Retro City Rampage. It's nothing like Retro City Rampage, but... No, um, no not gameplay-wise. Actually, no. kind of... Right, a little bit of Payday 2, what I was describing was planning things, and that's a... Yeah. There's a lot of that in Hotline Miami, because... There are rooms filled with mobsters, and they have certain attack patterns, and sometimes you'll have to sneak past them. And there's a lot of really, yeah, and that's like Payday too. There's a lot of creative ways to kill them in the excessively violent ways. Yeah, yeah, but uh, it's it's um, kind of eight bit graphics. So when you die, boom, you're right back in there. So it has that whole, oh, I'll just do this one more time. Oh, just one more time. Oh, I'll just give it one more try. You know, so that's yeah. it's addictive in that sense. But like, so it's, it gets right. crazy difficult eventually. Like you have to memorize the levels and stuff eventually. Yeah. I've um I've managed to like a plus all the stages on that game just because I found oh, it gosh. so good. I think yeah. I get an average of a B or a C, but I haven't beaten it yet, so I haven't... I, I pr That is a game I'll probably play forever, just go back and try to play a random level or whatever. Yeah, well, um, it, it is good, and I also just like the style of the game. I think what we're learning is I'm just really big on abstract style games, but Hotline Miami is... and has a very bizarre story, which I love. Yes, and it I, does. It I really that, does. Yeah, do, how do you want to describe the story? Just the... the I mean... Sound? At first, you start out as just being a hitman and going into these random buildings. You put on a mask each time, and it sometimes has different abilities and stuff. Oh, they're good, and and that's somehow I wouldn't have been able to get the A plus achievement if I oh, hadn't yeah, used without... one right. of them. There's one which is um, I, think I always Zach, use the... Zach the Frog, yeah, who oh, okay. um, who extends your combo. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it's really, really useful if you want to build up points. I always use the uh, the Wolfman mask because he starts with a knife. Yeah, yeah. But um, but yeah, you uh, what was I describing? Oh, the story. Yeah. <laughs> start. You start as just a hitman, but then as it goes on, you're not quite sure if you're like hallucinating or if the world's really getting that messed up. Because at one point, you start in your house and there's a dude just going through your fridge, and you he turns around and he's like missing an eye, and he yells at you for bugging him or something. Yeah. It's and it's weird. I don't know. It gets really it's weird. It's great. But it's all weird with a purpose. Is it? I, I haven't mean, yeah. I haven't uh I can't even remember how far I am into it right now, but but um what's it's good. Hmm. Oh I will this kind of a spoiler, but I was gonna say what's the last thing that happened story wise and I can tell you how far you are. Um hmm, I'm trying to think I I think the last phone message was it like didn't even have a message. Yeah, that's um pretty late on. Some big fact yeah, some big things happen soon. Yeah, cuz it wasn't even like a coded cuz you get a phone a phone call from some dude being very vague like we need you to go fix the plumbing in this house, make sure to bring a big wrench or something like that, you know. They're really hilarious sometimes. Yeah, some of them are pretty good, but um but yeah, I like it. I gotta jump back into that. Um, so because they're doing a, the reason why we're talking about this is because they're doing a sequel. 
Yeah, that is going to be nuts, I'm sure. Yeah, that's. I think it's supposed to be coming out at the end of this month or the beginning of next. Oh my gosh, I need to finish yeah. this game quick then. Yeah, they announced this a while ago. It started off as deal as DLC, but mm-hmm. it beca- it kept becoming so big that they ended up making it its own release. Okay. okay. Yeah, so it's like the first one. It actually what they've said for the story and what you can tell so far about the story is that they want to take a more sad and emotional approach to it. Hmm. Like hmm. yeah, so it's really weird. Since the first one was so excessively violent for a point. It was pretty much ultra violence. Um, yeah. This one does it, but has it a lot darker, a lot more sobering than the highs of Hotline Miami. And they, and the story split into two, and it, it it's very interesting. Um, it's spoilers if you're looking forward to the game, but I wanted to just give Scott the general premise because it's pretty. Cool. Oh, it's, it's all good. It's like if you took like. I don't even know if this is going to be helpful for anyone. If you took the movie Mulholland Drive and like mixed it up with the movie The Heist and Italian Job and other nonsense like that, yeah. you'd get this game. It's just so random, but it's got kind of horror elements in it as well. Yeah, like the scenes where you're talking to the people in animal masks. Right. Yeah. 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 They yeah. and they speak really in weird cryptic clues. So it's kind of like Twin Peaks as well, I guess, in the mm-hmm. cryptic clue thing. Um, so. Yeah, but the but, second one, the premise is, um, story-wise, is it's split into two uh, stories that you work through. I'm not sure, but you just work through in the game, and it will just give you random stages or something like that. Hmm. But it's split up into two stories, which is one of them is a year, it takes place a year after Hotline Miami, and and these people are making a horror movie based on it, based on the events of it. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then the guy playing playing the the character based on the character you play in Hotline Miami, the first one, mm-hmm. starts seeing like messed up visions and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And then in the other story, it's about fans and like crazy fanatics of the guy who you're playing as in the first Hotline Miami that they start to just go around random places, beating up low-level thugs and killing them, basically. Hmm. And it's about them wanting to receive one of the phone calls in the first Hotline Miami. But it seems very meta in the way that they're doing it, because the first game is meta as well. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, well, oh. like, what little I know about Hotline Miami, like, just from, like, the art style and stuff like that that I've seen, like, on my Tumblr dash and everything, is it doesn't really seem like... It, it's something that would have that kind of deepness to the story, at least the way I saw it. Yeah. So it's kind of cool hearing that it's actually really interesting and, I hate to use that word again, but kind of deep compared to what you would expect with like that art style and stuff. Yeah. It's by an indie game developer called Cactus. It's his first commercial release. But he does sort of very weird, abstract, little, almost art game type stuff. But he does it with really cool video game gameplay that makes it fun as well. Like with all this deep stuff, Hotline Miami is still very, very fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the thing. That's kind of why I didn't dive into it right away. Is I had no idea it had any story at all. I thought it would just be like kind of playing Grand Theft Auto, the first one's nonchalantly. But there's there's more to it, and it's it's very arcadey and addictive. Yeah. I'll have to try it out then. Is it still free on PS Plus or? Uh, that game has gone on and off more sales, more times on PS Plus than anything else I've seen. So, yeah, it's probably not free, but I'm sure it's discounted. But it's usually a cross buy when you get it for Vita and PS3. Oh, yeah. okay. I would totally get it, bro. It's great. Yeah, or even on even on PC, it's still yeah, it's on PC. It's probably cheaper on PC at this point. Oh, okay. Yes, it check out. it out and report back. I don't know. Um, we'll have something to talk about all together. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anything else, Stevie? Uh, no, that's all I've pl- all I've been playing and haven't been playing lately. Yeah. Nice. All right. Cool. Um, what, what have, have I been you been playing, playing Scotty? Yes. Uh, what have you been? Tell us about your day. May my well, my day wasn't very exciting. It just involved laundry and and errands, but um, I've been playing the 3D classics some more, uh, getting the review ready um, with Anthony, and really digging those. Uh, I can actually, uh, I won't go into it too much so that you guys read the review, but um, 
I will say that I was actually able to progress in Echo the Dolphin with the new Super Dolphin mode because it makes you invincible. That game is damn hard. It's damn difficult of a game. I, but, could, uh, never, I could never figure out how to even start that game. It's well, yeah. That's the thing too. Is it doesn't tell you where to go at all. There's it no hand holding or anything. Do. I don't know how any of the gameplay features work. I don't know how to get anywhere else. It just happens. Like, that's you like, have to open a portal, and it gives you like these weird, almost Hotline Miami type cryptic messages, kind of. Yeah. And you don't know what the fuck to do. They're like poems. That I'm, like, I'm getting genuinely angry about this, but it's like logic says, <laughs> go right. It's a it's a platformy type thing on a Sega system. Go right, but it doesn't work. I, right. Maybe it's kind of an adventure game. Maybe somehow like a point and click one. Like that uh, would make sense bit. because it's a bit puzzly. But I don't. I've done, I can't say that I've played that game, even though I've spent a lot of time on it because I can never figure out what to do once I've opened a portal that sucks dolphins into the sky. <laughs> right. Which makes uh, me ashamed because if that's crazy at the beginning, I want to see what other silly things there are. Because from what I've heard, that series gets really, like, weird. Just, like, Cthulian type horrors in the sea and stuff like that. I haven't... Oh, the, the series, maybe, but the first game I didn't get horribly far in... Um, but uh, well, just the second one's box art looks really weird and stuff. Yeah, like that. yeah, it's an interesting. It's another. Well, it's up there with like Hotline Miami, where it's if you take it at face value, you're not going to expect um, what the game actually holds. Yeah, and it's interesting because this is a retro title as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, I've been playing those uh, a lot more. Doki Doki Universe and uh, on my Vita and my PS3. And it's fun. That game is cool. I think I'd still play it even if I wasn't reviewing it for the site because I just like the charm of it. And the coolest thing about the Vita, and this is amazing for if you're doing reviews, is the screen capture function. Like you can take a picture of what you're yes. of whatever's on the screen. So this is, this is one thing I really appreciated about uh, Hatsune Miku was when I was doing a review for that is I found the screenshot function in, B- in the PS3. And I'm like, oh, thank you. Jesus, this is going to make my life a lot easier and like yeah. really show off like what I can do with like the customs thing, like the customization thing and everything. So oh, okay. I mean, I want more games to do that. Like I can only think of three games that really take make use of that function. Mm-hmm. It should be Tekken Six, Gran Turismo Five, and Six, I guess, and Hatsune Miku. Everything else just completely ignores that functionality, so I'm glad they just made it something that works for everything in the Vita. That's really cool. Yeah, it's, um... I didn't know that they... Wait, so they do that in the Miku game? or? Yeah, yeah, all you gotta do is, um... You just hit, like, the PlayStation button, go over to the Photo tab, and it'll say, uh, Save Screenshot. Just hit X and it'll take a screenshot for you. I didn't even know that. That's how I got all my screens for it. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Um, sweet. Yeah, uh, but I've been playing that, and not Sega related, but I've been playing Tales of Zelia with my roommate here and there as well, which is a very fun game. And I think we finally have gotten past the uh, me Tales of Zelia. Um, have you played any of the Tales RPGs before? I have not. That's I have not played that many Sega RPGs, unfortunately. Oh, it's not a Sega RPG. I was saying like the one thing that's not really Sega related was that. But um. Oh, I, mean, I see. Right. Sorry. It, it, it's the a it's I, Namco Bandai. Yeah, I mean, I like the Tales games because there's um, it's real time fighting instead of turn based. I'm not a fan of turn based RPGs. So, but it's fun and it's got co op fighting. So we just yell at the screen while we're kicking the shit out of things and laugh at the bad cutscenes and whatever, but uh, I think we finally made it past like the, the regular 10-hour tutorial that's in all JRPGs, so <laughs> we're starting to get the hang of it now and everything. So, yeah. Um, that's I've seen that for like like 29 at, at work yeah, it, sometimes. Yeah, it dropped a good bit in price because, uh, I think because they announced Zelia 2 for the US already, or not it- already, but finally. And I think it's like the one we have at work is like the collector's edition. And oh, it's like 39. Is it, it's I, worth I it? Am, I am again a tool and got the collector's edition because I really hate having money. Um, but it's You get the collector's edition of everything. And I think maybe. See, a lot you of think that, but really, 
there are so few games that come out with collector's editions, and no, uh, a lot of them. Or, come uh, on. I, I let me rephrase that. There are a few games that come out with collector's editions that I am a fan of. Like Aliens is the first big collector's edition I've bought probably since like Resident Evil Five or something. Because I just don't care about the shooters and the well that. That's pretty much it. But uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, like the uh, um, the aliens collectors and I have the tales collectors. But yeah, it, it's it bothers me when brand new IPs have collectors editions that you, they're just hoping you'll love the first game, so you get it. Like Titanfall has a collectors edition coming out. Who knows if that game is going to be shit or not? But Neptunia had a, had one like from day one. Oh yeah, well, that was like a weird. That and um. Or well, Neptunia is just creepy and. Weird. I can't remember the yeah. other. There, oh, there, my... there, there was like a time when the was it Nice N I S or whoever released those. Mm-hmm. Nice. Uh, they, like the three games that they had out that year had the weird like big box thing with a art book and I, maybe a soundtrack or something. Yeah. Um. Well, so like, it wasn't now... even just Neptunia. It was whatever that company was shooting out at the at the time. And like Neptunia Victory. Like, when I got it last year, I got one of the first edition ones, and it still came with, like, a soundtrack on its own. And I'm like, mm-hmm. there's no guarantee a soundtrack's even going to be good. There's no guarantee this game's even going to be good, even though it yeah. surprisingly was. But, uh, I don't know. That's, that series... <sighs> <laughs> I have every game in the series now, just because... Uh, and I don't know why it landed on your doorstep, <laughs> which you now have because you're not homeless. Yeah, exactly. Hooray! Well, like, here's the funny thing about that is, like, we got review copies for the first two, and I think we ran a contest for the first one as well. Mm-hmm. And then, that. and then we got that victory came out, and they wouldn't give us a review copy. And I went out and bought it myself. And the funny thing for that was is the very first achievement you got was something like, oh, let's see it had like a caption that said like let's see how many reviewers don't get this one. And I had mentioned something in the Neptunia MK2. Yeah, review. I remember you saying that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was like, I don't want to get this or something like that. I can't remember the exact one I used. So I'm like, oh, shots fired then. And then they actually... A quote from you specifically? I remember saying something like, I don't get this, and I don't think I want to get this for Mark II. And then they put that in as the uh, first achievements catch, and I'm like, okay. Between this and not giving us the review copy, I kind of I kind of felt like that was pointed towards us. But If it is, then that is brilliant, and I hope <laughs> it does. We are immortalized in a surprisingly decent JRPG. We've made yeah, it, yeah. it's amazing if it is. <laughs> So we should yeah. do some research and then we can get credit. I don't, I don't yeah, know. We can be in one of those games. Let's yeah. Add, yeah. Let's there can be like, like a, a creepy video. representation of our site on it <laughs> instead of like console girls. The sad you know? thing is, is I'm actually kind of having. It's kind of like a love to hate type thing at this point because I watch the entire <clears> round <throat> of the anime as well, the Neptunia anime. And wow. like I cringe, I cringe the entire time. I'm like, <laughs> not a bad oh, thing. Or is this weird? I, <laughs> good thing you whispered that so he didn't hear it. See me. Yeah, I whispered it to this side as well, so it was just. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little bit weird, but yeah. And I was like, I made my girlfriend watch it with me. I'm like, okay, if you, <laughs> right. this, you, you have to watch this. this you please bitch. watch these scantily clad girls. <laughs> <laughs> you watch this. Well, you episode fuck. seven was like a full-on fan service episode, like on a nude beach or something. I'm like, sounds like oh, High School of the Dead Lord. to me. You yeah. will watch this fucking anime. It was High School of the Dead, except actually good. But oh, <laughs> snap. fucking whip again. Well, compa- well, comparatively, it was good. Wait, what do you mean? Because I love High School of the Dead, aside from flopping boobs and uh, panty shots everywhere unnecessarily. I didn't like High School of the Dead. I don't I'll know. defile her in her private areas. <laughs> that that villain, the one that got me so up in arms on Mark II, was actually I'll in the I'll wear one. her skin as a human doll. Oh, no, not him. The one that like was licking the five-year-old characters. Wait, not him? As in there's a character that does that? No, I think there was one that mentioned something like that, but like oh. no, like the pedophile oh, character. Oh, 
in my hand and I'll punch it through your stomach and get your kidney and pull it out through your mouth. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. Wear it like a hat. I just wanted I just <laughs> wanted t attention because I am a six year old boy. <laughs> Apparently. Okay. <laughs> All right. So that's what I've been playing. Um <laughs> And uh, oh, uh, yeah, anybody, any, 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 anybody else been playing anything? Nah, not really. Okay, cool. So we'll uh, jump into the news, um, and uh, we'll talk about what's going on there in the Sega world. couple releases on, on the mobile platform since we last talked. Um, first one was Sonic and All-Star Racing Transformed got released for iOS. Uh, <clears throat> and that is... so oh, I had it in front of me. Look at me being professional, but now I'm not because I forgot the cost of it. I think it's five bucks. Is that right? Somebody want to verify that? Or I just... So. Do, 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 do. Yeah, it's four ninety nine. Sorry. Uh, $4.99. Um, there are in-app purchases as well, so some people are mad about that, um, but I love that game. I haven't had a chance to try it yet. Uh, what do you guys think about that, though? If it's half as good as the as the console version, that's well worth the five bucks. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, as of all ports, it just depends on who they got to do it and <laughs> if it works out for them. Yeah, I'm not sure who ported it. Uh, I don't see it on our I'm thinking there, it's probably hard light, like probably most of their uh, mobile stuff is. Yeah, probably. Oh, if it was, um, oh, who's the guy who does the Sonic CD ones? Christian Whitehead. Uh, Christian, Christian Whitehead. Whitehead. Yeah, Christian Whitehead. You, that's pr pretty much a seal of quality. <laughs> about now with iOS ports. Yeah. I don't know if he would really work on a on a kart racer port though. He's more of like the side scrolling platformer type, but. Oh no, but I just mean in general, in terms of porting controls to one system to another. <clears throat> right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's damn good. I would like to see him try that with a different genre, honestly. He changed my opinion completely about iOS controls and the platformer, so... Huh. Yeah, but, um, so that got released, that's cool. And also Rhythm Thief and the Paris Caper, which has a different name than the 3DS game. Um, they're... I'm not sure if it's, it's mainly like, for this, but it's... It's related hmm? to the rhythm games we were talking about. I yeah, think. exactly. Uh, they um, they added some costumes and also some different levels in it. So it's not really a sequel, but it's not really uh, a straight port either. Um, but I, I love that game on 3DS. It was really good. Um, they had a lot of... There were like 20 different types of rhythm games in it or something, uh, a big number. So it wasn't just tap this space and scribble on the screen really fast like Elite Beat Agents or anything like that. I thought I, I think it's, agents, it's... Now, wasn't it taken down for at least a day or so? Or yeah, something? all they said was... Um, let me find it here. Uh, uh, an unexpected problem's been discovered, uh, so they removed it temporarily to fix it. And But if you go in there now, it's already back up, so I think it was literally taken down only for a day. Oh, good. Uh, that one, however, is ten dollars. So, better Not be so <laughs> amazing. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I don't mind if it's worth it. I think there's a bit of pressure on these games to be really cheap. Yeah, that's true. I mean, playing it, I reviewed it for the site, so uh, it's um. It's rare that I finish a game. But blah, blah. It's rare that I finish a game, but when I have to review it, I do for sure. And it's a surprisingly long game, especially for a rhythm game, because it actually has a story to it and everything. Um, Is so, there like a, a light version or a demo for it or anything on on uh, iOS? Or? Let me and check. then there's a demo on 3DS if you've got one of those. Yeah, there is a demo on 3DS. Uh, let's see. You'd like to think with a price tag that high, not a lot of people are going to really want to... Like, not a lot of people yeah, haven't heard of it. Yeah, but when you think about it in terms of general video games, that's amazingly cheap. True. Mm -hmm. It yeah, doesn't matter true. just because it's on iOS. Yeah, true. It doesn't look like there's... Oh, hold on. Okay, you might on. be best <laughs> to uh, check out on... 3DS, but 
I don't know how you would... You can... Oh, well, actually, the problem is I'm finding a bunch of the soundtrack as a result here, so let me see here. Um... But yeah, I love the game on 3DS, so I hope it made a good transfer to iOS. But we are going to be reviewing that for the site, so everyone will find out soon enough. That's the idea. Uh, that's on iOS, and some bonus stuff with that. Also, speaking of um, 3DS, sort of, another thing that was released, or will be released soon in Japan, is the Shining Force Gaiden Final Conflict. Um, which, uh, according to the post, actually takes place in between Shining Force 1 and 2. So it's a game we never got over here. Um, it'd be cool was, if we somehow did get that on the eShop. When there were still like, animals and stuff like that? I don't know. I'm not as familiar with the Shining Force series as Because oh, that others, was the gimmick so. of the original one, was it was an RPG where you just played as animals. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. This one's from uh, Game Gear. I don't know if it was... Um, <laughs> Excuse me. I don't know if it was only ever on Game Gear or anything else, but but yeah. Um, what do you guys think about that? Are you into the Shining Force games? Well, I've never really messed with them, to be honest with you. But mm -hmm. I'd give it a shot if it's price ball and everything. Yeah, I. The more I see coming out by Sega, the more I want to get. Um, a uh, I probably should just start a Japanese PSN account to download stuff, but. The 3DS stuff, I really would like to... like Because we're never going to get like Attack on Titan. That's not Sega-related, but I really want that game. But can't play it on my 3DS because it's American. Mm. On, on that note, on the note of Attack on Titan, I've been thinking a lot this week. Why hasn't Platinum been contacted to do a game based around Kill la Kill? Because that would be fucking amazing. I haven't actually seen that. Is that good? Who's, uh... It's very good. Scott, I think it's another one of his animes. Oh. I think oh. if we stay still, he won't think <laughs> about anime anymore. Oh, okay, okay. But, but giant eyes and cat ears and, and senpais. I mean, what? Just Not sure what a senpai still. is. Just stay still. It's something you want to notice you. Oh. Okay. Play for oh, I... four, you'll get it. <laughs> I That's on my list now, after what you guys anime. said about it, so... <laughs> uh, so... Yeah, um, Shining Force. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was interested in it, because that was the game that, for some reason, it was a precursor to what's going on now with YouTube, where all videos of Shining Force 4, it was the one with the Saturn or something, just got pulled from YouTube, and everyone was baffled by it. That was oh, really? a while ago now, though. <laughs> yeah. Huh. I talked about it on an old episode of Kids Table, but yeah, it was really weird. That is, that's, yeah, hmm, I wonder about that. But, uh, they, but yeah, um... The, I've never played a Sega RPG, and I think that would be a nice place to start. That or Fantasy Star, uh, online or something like that. Yeah, for sure. Um, they actually, uh, Anthony also mentioned in the article when he posted this that if you do end up getting it, um, this game, there's a whole fan translation. There's a Shining Force fan translation website, but I actually yeah, I checked it out. It is from YouTube. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. maybe that's what initiated like a, the site or something. I don't know, but it's amazing that that uh, like literally word for word, line for line in the in the conversations are on the website. So that's really cool that they do that. Um, so they it's need possible. That for Yakuza, at least for Yakuza Five. Yeah, or they need to finish that for uh, Sega Gaga, which. That oh, is one Rockets. thing I will never own, but will always search for. So, um, let's see, let's see. So that's that's uh, all that happened in the news. Oh, just kidding. Only the biggest announcement since Gearbox decided to shit all over our faces. Alien <laughs> Ice... <laughs> <laughs> uh, that period of time. Yeah, that, uh, that poop infested I moment. found it kind of funny. I found it kind of sad. Yeah, yeah. But Alien Isolation was officially announced last week, and oh my gosh, I want this game to be good. We talked about this last week, and it's funny that, and it's unfortunate that I didn't get the podcast posted until after this announcement was made, because it's going to seem kind of dated, but whatever. So I'm wearing my, wearing my Whalen Corp shirt um, in honor of talking about this, but uh, Alien Isolation... You guys watched the trailer. Let's let's discuss the trailer first. Um, I guess we'll I'm, just go. We'll go through. Yeah, Stevie, you I'm go really ahead first. I'm really hoping this game keeps its balls and manages to be about one alien. And I've heard they're trying to include marines in it, and they'll be the main bad guys. But that's gonna suck. It's still gonna be shooting gameplay. 
Just, I really hope this is a good Alien game, and I'm really concerned that I might be buying into hype that I was the Colonial Marines. So, because I realise some of the same things we're saying now is a lot like what we were saying with Aliens. Yeah, Colonial right, right. Marines. I think that game is just, oh, it just shat all over the Aliens gaming franchise. Yeah, it's like the Sonic cycles turned into the Alien cycle. Yeah, almost. almost. Yeah. Almost, but yeah, yeah. that's um. I do look forward to it, though, because it has a lot of interesting things, including uh, the game's art style is based around the original Alien, which means it's a 1970s view of what they think the future would be. So it's all very analog, and there are buttons and stuff like that, but it's all very futuristic and spacey, even though we now it would probably be like touch screens or whatever if we imagined our future. And that's a cool idea. Yeah, I really yeah. like the environment in the trailer. I mean, I'm not much of an Aliens fan. I didn't really like the movies or anything. Oh, but, you're an idiot. Yeah, go watch <laughs> go watch some more anime then, Brett. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, don't say that uh, word. Stay still. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you don't watch my Bakamana Gatari. But, no, like, what I saw in the uh, trailer looked okay, really interesting. Okay, anime now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I promise I'm not all anime. <laughs> I like anime too, but I, I but I. No, no, it's gotten to Scotty. <laughs> no, he's been infected. Yes. Oh man. I actually I do like Gurren Lagann. Oh shit, it's gotten to me as well. Oh. That, that's why you would probably like Kill La Kill because it's by the people who made Gurren Lagann. But uh, that's not the topic here. We're talking about. about it. We're it's totally off topic. Alien. Yeah, let's I go back to aliens or I alien isolation. Just isolated our um, listeners for a bit. <laughs> oh. Uh, so yeah, what do you what do you think, Brett? Though you said you like the um, atmosphere, or yeah, I like the atmosphere. Like I said, I'm not much of an aliens guy, but I do really like the atmosphere and all that. And mm. like he said, like the very '70s interpretation of the future, it looked really cool. Yeah, yeah, that's that's. I agree. Uh, do you it's have anything else? In a way, this reminds me to the games. Oh, sorry, Brett. I'm terrible. Oh no, go ahead. Yeah, go I ahead. started talking over you too. Sorry. No, I was going to cool. say this. Oh no, you go, sorry. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, well I was going to say that just we haven't had, I mean it kind of reminds me this hype as well of the hype for Dead Space when everyone was hyped for the first fully, you know, sci-fi horror game that was, you know, it was pretty a new concept. And I just hope that this turns out to be more scary than the first Dead Space was, which was kind of scary but it really relied on action heavily as well, so. Mm-hmm. I um. Well, I mean, then again, to be fair, there's a lot of aliens in dead space, so. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's. I'll. I'll. I'll I don't want to say too much yet. Um, Brett, did you have anything else to say about it? No, no. I'm. I'm pretty much done at this point. Okay. Um, I am super hyped for this game, and I'm so worried that I'm already getting overly excited because I was very excited for Aliens: Colonial Marines. I am clearly a fan. But uh, yeah, it's it it's starring Ripley's daughter Amanda Ripley, which she was only mentioned very briefly in the second movie in the director's cut of the film. When um, for viewers that don't remember it that much, I'm not gonna sum up Aliens because fucking get cultured. Right no, uh, <laughs> um, but there's a part in the director's cut where uh. The, the main guy from Mad About You. I don't remember his real name. <laughs> <laughs> mad About uh, You guy. I guess you're not mad about him. <laughs> uh, not really, no. I don't... Psh. And um, he tells Ripley that her daughter, who in the first movie she was on their way back to see... Or she was going to see her when she got back to Earth and she would have been 11. In the second movie he informs her that she died at age 68 um, two years ago when he's telling her about, about this. So she does have a daughter. She could have gone back and tried to look for Ripley, but that's literally all they mention about her in the movie. So the fact that this game is being completely made around her, a lot of people are uh, are being skeptical. But there's also cool. the fact that... It's a that, cool reference, if anything. Well, no, yeah, exactly. But, it could have been unrelated, but they're trying to tie it in in a cool way at least. Well no, what I'm saying is like everything that that dude said to Ripley in that movie was a lie. He was just working for the oh. company and wanted like the aliens as weapons, you know, money, 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 money. No, but so, she still had a daughter. Yeah, she did have a daughter, so this could have totally happened. Um, so it is totally plausible, which I think is cool. Um, the uh, Yeah, it, it's 
it's actually, I've never played Dead Space, but seeing all this stuff around it is making me want to finally sit down and play Dead Space, at least the first one. Um, the first that one has game... brilliant boss battles, but I think that's, that's cool. the best part of it. No, the opening is good as well, uh, but I would say a lot of people prefer Dead Space 2. Oh, okay. I've only played the demo of the first game, but I know that everybody was saying, like, if Alien were a game, it would be that, or at least that Aliens, along the lines of what yeah. that series wants to do, or should do, yeah. But, um... I hope it's creepy. I hope they stick with that, and I hope that they only keep it as one alien because that way the whole game can just psych you out in completely different aspects. Um, it's kind of like a game which I'm. I like the concept of a game where a character chases you throughout it, like Metroid Fusion. Yeah, or like, um, did you guys ever play uh, Haunting Ground on the PS2? I have no. Has that got the same thing? It's um. Haunting Ground is by Capcom, I think, but they, uh, you guys know the Clock Tower series? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's kind of the same thing. It's, it, well, the Haunting Ground was going to be a Clock Tower game, but they just gave it to Capcom and said, hey, just do this, so they, um, you know, just kind of put a different layer of paint on it, and, but in the game, you play as this girl that is, for some reason, trapped in a castle, and all you have is, uh, your dog with you, and, um, <clears throat> but you're trying to escape this one big ogre-type dude that's chasing you the whole time, but all you can do, you can set traps, but you, I don't think you ever really have a weapon in it, or maybe you get a gun, a handgun or something at one point, but so all you can do in the game is like hide under beds or hide in closets, but if he finds you in one area, you you can't really hide there again because he'll remember that you hid there at one point, so it's very much like you're very helpless, you're literally just trying to hide for the majority of the game or outsmart him, so I hope that they do that, um, succeed with that, because it's a... I like games like that. That's what survival horror is, and that's what, like, Resident Evil was at first, and... but turned into an action game. You know, people said that's what Dead Space felt like here and there, so... Yeah. The helplessness. I, I just... As long as they stick to the helplessness mood that they're going with, then I think it could be awesome. Yeah. Um, I, the trailer is good, and the dev diary looks promising, but then again... It could be fake, like in Aliens, Colonial Marines. There's just yeah, this, it's so it's hard to get have skepticism around this. And the thing is, like, let me see if I can do a screen share real quick. I've also here. heard that there are that there's a lot of action in the game, and there are a lot more guns in it than you'd expect. Which is oh, a shame. Really? one thing he says in the video is these people wouldn't have that many guns. They're not Marines, but yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna try to show you guys my background real quick. Let me see if I can do this. Um. Okay. Can you guys see my wallpaper? Not right yet. But it's, it's loading. I think. Maybe yeah. now. Got it. Cool. So that's um, supposed to be Amanda right there, and that's the uh, the ship that she gonna is going to explore. Let me get back to the thing here and stop Whoa. the. Um, Whoa! Oh, sorry. Inception of things. Um. The. Uh, Inception. Whoa. All right. It should be back to normal now. <laughs> you mean Scottception? It would be. Oh. So there's um, so you play as Amanda. You're going back to f try to find out what happened to your mom, uh, uh, Ellen Ripley. Um, the uh, I had the first movie on in the background today to kind of prep me for talking about this. But the end of the first movie, they destroy that ship. <clears throat> so how is she going back to that ship? Maybe it's a clone ship. I yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I so I didn't think maybe about that until I watched. Maybe you hear that right, or is yeah. it? Maybe the, she doesn't know it was blown up. To be fair, she's just looking for it. Maybe just and another because it was basically like international truckers. You know, they they yeah. ju just were hauling a cargo, so she could have gone to any one of those things. So I don't know. It didn't really mention. I don't know if it mentioned exactly which ship she was going to, but so yeah, but. That trailer was cool, and they also released a dev diary, um, which you guys started to mention. They they show in there and talk about how they want to stick with the '70s idea of what the future will be. So, it, which I think is cool, and um, it'll keep its character. They said they were trying to do that with Aliens, Colonial Marines. How? I don't even know. They didn't. None of that game looked like the movies, except for what the hell is his name, Bishop for whatever reason, he's been in everything related to aliens to ignore canon of all kinds, but it's alright because he's an android. 
I don't know, fucking stupid. Sorry, I'm going on rants now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, Colonial Marines. Yeah, I think that was it. That was it, basically. Um, but yeah, I think they're trying really hard to stick with that aesthetic, and I think that's really cool, and I hope that they do, which I could see being a huge challenge and could totally... They could be lazy and just say, screw it, this is a new game, let's do whatever we want to with it. So I... That, I'm more skeptical about them sticking with that than I am with them sticking... Wait, words. <laughs> <laughs> I'd say, despite... Oh, sorry, but I would say despite myself, I'm hyped for it. Cause I'm still I, yeah, I, I'm excited for it. I mean, and uh, at first someone said there was going to be co-op on a website, but then they already said, like, no, there's not going to be any co-op or multiplayer It's called in this isolation. Game. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, derp. But, uh... The thing about the thing about isolation is, and like I've said before, I'm not really a fan, but I want it to succeed so bad because Colonial Marines really fucked up Sega's reputation. Even if it's not entirely their fault, they're getting blamed for it. It's and just the last, it, yeah, it's horrible like, that it it screwed up their reputation, but not Gearbox's as much. Yeah, Gear, Gearbox still has an awesome game, Borderlands. Yeah. Uh, Whatever. It's like, last time they had a game that fucked up their reputation this bad, which was Sonic 06, they came back a couple yeah. years later with Unleashed. And mm -hmm. while it wasn't perfect, it still shattered everybody's expectations because of how bad 06 was. Yeah, but, it was but it was a lot better. I want this to be basically the Aliens franchise's Unleashed. I want this to restore everything back to, the, to what it should be. And I yeah. think it's got or potential to do that. on the path. Because I would say Unleashed yeah. isn't the return. It's on the path. It's when they start. Yeah, get them back on a good path. Yeah, because they had or, only good games after that. Because uh, I think... Um, they've gotten better or until Lost... I haven't yeah, well, Lost well, World. Well, Where Secret, Secret Rings and Black Knight came up before Unleashed, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah so after Unleashed, they were only good games out. Because they did Colors, they had... Um, generations and Sonic Four was all right. Like the Sonic Four. Oh no! Sorry, I hated Sonic Four. Oh. I I didn't like it, episode it was, two. I liked episode one. Yeah, it, Sonic Four. It, they were both good games, though. They weren't bad. Sonic no, games. no, I disagree. Sonic Four episode one is horrendously bad. Episode two is horrendous. I episode hate the temple level in Sonic Part One. It's so bad. The reason I so say you got Super Sonic. But. The the reason that I say that they're good is because I couldn't even play 06. It was that bad and annoying yeah. to me. Yeah, I at least no, finished like, episode one and two. Granted, they're a lot shorter than Sonic 06, but, but that's no that's, that's what I that's what I mean when like, I say that they're at least like good. You've moved into a, it's like you've moved into a relationship after you've just been you know hit and abused by your partner, and yeah. this guy he insults you, but he doesn't do you physical damage. So yeah. you kind of think it's all right by proxy. Are you just? Are, nothing... wait, are, are we talking about oh. the games, or are you describing Sonic and Tails' relationship? I am describing oh. Sonic and Tails' relationship. <laughs> and Knuckles is the one who beats Sonic. Oh, okay. Oh, Lord. <laughs> when did Sonic turn gay? <laughs> well, fan art would tell you. Although that he does always avoid. 1991. Amy. He what? does always avoid Amy and hangs out with a little boy more than her. Good point. Think about that, Internet. Sega, please still support us. We are a fan <laughs> site and we do love you. <laughs> well, some of us. Oh! No, but, we um, love you until you do stupid shit, and then we get... But uh, I, I understand where you're coming from, though, Brett. Uh, oh, gosh, I hope that's not a crack on my screen. Sorry, distractions. <laughs> um, I understand where you're coming from, though, is that they... They, uh, see, it's a double, it's a double-edged sword though, because even if isolation is crap, it could still be better crap than um, Colonial Marines. Right. You know what I mean. And they yeah. just, so. they just need something to restore the reputation here, because Colonial Marines, like, at least from people I've talked to, has just completely shot their reputation. It was the dishonesty, mostly, I think. Yeah, it was more yeah. that than... I mean, if they hadn't hyped it up, and if Randy Pitchford hadn't... I mean, Randy Pitchford was just doing his job. He's a hype man, you know. He has to be the happy like face. Like Flavor Flav. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. <laughs> or, like Jazzy, or like Will Smith for Jazzy Jeff, you know. He's got to be uh, No, that, that was the other that, way around, I'm sorry. Oh, was it? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. 
But um, no, you don't know your Will Smith history. Story. I'm offended. I don't care. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, you said you racist. But that's <laughs> what <laughs> racist. Oh no! No oh, no no, hell. no no no! Um, <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> That is a good... I don't even remember what point I was trying to bring back now. Uh, the best of the worst, essentially. Yes. Um, oh, the, oh, no, the, no, 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 sorry. That, he's dishonest. a good hype man. He's um, a good hype man. Yeah, well, no, the dishonesty was a big thing, though. And with the trailer for Isolation, they already say right away, this is a work... This is taken from a work in progress. This is not a final project, you know, things like that. But, um... Is this by Gearbox? No, this is Creative Assembly. Oh okay. Right. Oh, I trust them. I actually trust them. They yeah, it's a new new company entirely. Um so you know, hopefully Sega, Sega, Sega and I would Sega. assume that Sega has learned from this as well like to keep a closer eye on it and not just give them the keys and say, "All right, go do some donuts, you know, and make a game." Do some donuts, yeah. Uh, yeah like, like creative assembly is like kind of an in-house type deal for Sega anyway, so this is already going to be That's that's true, yeah. A lot better for them than working with Gearbox who only gave a shit about Borderlands. Right, yeah. That's very true. I didn't even think about that. So I'm, you know, these are all pointing to reasons to stay excited for it. So I just really hope it's good. I do want to play Dead Space now, though, because people every time I mention this game around friends, they're like, have you played Dead Space yet? I'm like, no, just haven't sat down with it, not, real, not really avoiding it or anything. When but. you look back at the generation, <laughs> yeah. I think it is, it is a very important game to it, in a way, yeah. Oh, Dead Space, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because it's there well, aren't many style and presentation, I guess, more than anything. Yeah, well, that's the most important thing, and, and that too. Like again, when I watched the movie today, um, it's really slow paced. Like you have to be slow paced for something to be scary, because if you're not, then it's just going to be like a a scream movie or something. It's just going to be anything that jumps out of a wall is supposed to be scary, and that's that's oh, yeah. not. That's just an. That's, that's just. Uh, well, that's Alien. Just, Alien is scary because of its concepts. It's a film that's basically about rape. When you think Essentially, about it. and just uh, um, it's there's one enemy taking out. I think there were like six crew members or something. Yeah. But and um, it's so tense because the first time you see it, you really don't know who's gonna live. I mean, yeah. now you probably would because you had the names of the people who in the later. Uh, right. Series. Yeah. But uh, but that's another thing with um like Alien Trilogy, uh, like Alex and I were saying last week, is it's just like Doom but with aliens. But the coolest thing about that game, though, um, the strongest point of it was its soundtrack, I think, because when you're walking around corridors and stuff, and it's pretty dimly lit, which added to it as well, but there's barely any music. It's no more than just like a like an echoing ping, like pew, doo, 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 you know, dumb stuff like that. Not that necessarily like the... low key techno type stuff. Yeah, but so all you hear is like if all you hear is a door open, and if you didn't open that door, then you're like, "What the hell is coming at me right now?" You know, um, or like little skittering things of the face huggers. So, you know, if it's it's just all if it's done right, that's why I think that game still holds up though, Alien Trilogy, because it's it's creepier than any other Alien game that's come out, even the uh, Alien vs Predator on console. I didn't play the PC ones, which I heard were much better than. The recent iterations, but uh, yeah, it's just gotta be scary. Damn it, just make it scary. <laughs> yeah, just, just, just make your, it. Just take just your time. Trust, with it. trust your audience with it that they're smart and want. Yeah, this. I mean, it was a huge lesson for all parties that made um, Colonial Marines. So hopefully, this. I just thought of this right now. They announced it, and it said it's coming out in late 2014. Yeah. It, that's not even a year away now. I'm betting you it will be pushed back. I, I hope it's it gets bad, pushed. and I hope it doesn't. But it will be pushed back. Oh, you're hoping no, it gets pushed. Back. No, I hope it gets pushed back because the de- like the fact that they just released a dev diary a year before it's due, you know, the first dev diary to show, or maybe they if they start doing a dev diary like every two weeks or something, you know, it's obviously well on its way. But it, it worries me a little bit. But again, uh, with Colonial Marines. Colonial yeah. Marines dropped. So. Well, didn't they say they were for a while, but it was under a different name or something, too? I think so. I can't quite remember. 
be mm-hmm. honest with you. In a way, I'm, this is just speculation, and maybe it probably isn't this bit unlikely, but maybe they're trying to combat... Maybe they were trying to get rid of this overly hyped factor by not saying anything about it for ages, and now that it's got to this point where they're confident in the product or that it's coming out so soon that they want to build up a little bit of hype but not overhype, they're bringing out these so close to its date. I mean, so close, it's a year away still, but right. know, kind of close for video games. Well, I think it might be pushed back if it isn't, but they were just spending time on it and not telling anyone to surprise us even, then I think that's a pretty good idea to get rid of what people said about uh, Colonial Marines. You yeah. mentioned it was in development for a long time under a different name or something. I don't have the name here, but it says it was announced in May of 2011 that oh, okay. Creative Assembly was working on an Aliens game. Yeah, wow. that's right. Okay. Cool. So they've been at this Are for a while. We even reported about that, I think. Aliens. Yeah, I just couldn't remember how long ago they said it, uh, they announced the game, actually. But I, that, that sounds about right, though. So that's cool. Um, so there's there's hope. Uh, they actually, <laughs> uh, Green Man Gaming. We put this on the site. It's a it's a website kind of similar to Steam, where you can buy PC games. Um, but uh, they already have it reservable in there, and there's a code to get twenty five percent off of reserving the game already. <laughs> Which, That's hey, awesome. cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if uh, I, if my yeah, computer could run it a lot better. I would go that route. Yeah. One same of our here. cast has is just appropriately, by the way. What's that? Oh what yeah, that's me. So oh, this is actually from a shirt Prometheus. from um, Prometheus. Did you guys Prometheus, see that movie? Yeah, Prometheus has a very like future version of Now's interpretation of the future. So it's kind of all like iPods and white walls and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. And that's yeah. supposed to be a prequel to Aliens. So it's kind of weird. When yeah, you think it is about weird. Whole retro it's future. Awful, but... But although the... Well, no, that's right. They were in a human spaceship, too. I was thinking of the alien spaceship, but... Brett, did you see Prometheus? Mm-mm. I didn't watch that. That's all right. You said you're not a fan. Go watch your anime, damn it. <laughs> yeah, shit, don't say that one. <laughs> Sorry. I've got to go watch Sakura Trick, I swear. <laughs> oh, it's so man. Kawhi- oh, oh, God, wow. Please tell me to just say that. <laughs> non disca. Fuck! I've infected you. No, I whatever. Uh, <laughs> I can move now. It's okay. We've got, we've got it. <laughs> Apparently you turn into a T-Rex when we mention that. Right? <laughs> that's, my, that's my trigger word. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I guess do you guys have anything else to say about it? I'm, a, I'm cautiously excited more than I probably should be. Ditto. I'm more excited I, than I, I thought I would be. That's That's cool. Especially was, since you said you're not really an Aliens fan. Yeah, like, I'm not really a fan, but, like, the environment and, like, the concept of it really... Right. ...really sounds pretty fun. So I'm looking I'm looking forward to it pretty cautiously. Yeah, I think that's pretty much the general consensus is we're all cautiously, optim- cautiously optimistic and just want this to be good. And maybe if it is good, you might like, want to rewatch the movie or something. Yeah. Right. I mean... I uh, I hope it's not released only on next gen consoles. I don't know why they would do oh, that. But, it uh, says it's on PS3. It's coming to PS3. So. Does it? I know we got we we posted how they're gonna uh, aim for it being 1080p, and that's like rarely done on 360 or PS3. So yeah, okay. they're gonna do that. I, care about the that. I just want to play it. I just they're gonna do that. Yeah, like seriously. Often. I don't know why it it bothers me. Like, even working around video games and stuff, it bothers me when people complain about things not being in 1080p. I'm like, the human eye can barely notice the difference, so just shut up and yeah. give me game. your home theater, all right? And Or tell me where you're working so I can apply and uh, earn enough money to complain about shit like that. You fucking... Let me enjoy oh. your products. <laughs> um, yeah, seriously. It's just whenever that pops up, it's just hashtag and oh never mind now I'm starting to talk Twitter I'm so sorry for that I'm so sorry that that started to happen uh, hashtag 1080p or hashtag um, upper class or whatever 1080p flag uh, hashtag, hashtag first world problems yeah um yolo <laughs> no no you've got to say hashtag 
Hashtag you, Lou. There I'm being all hip and with the kids now, eh? Hashtag. Got to do it like that. Oh, yeah. oh my God. You're more hip than me. I know. No, I just watched Jimmy Fallon. Uh, <laughs> what the fuck am I doing? I'm so tired. <laughs> <laughs> do you know... Stevie, do you realize that we're recording right now? Oh, no. I thought this was a dream. <laughs> But why am I getting more dream. tired as it goes? Well, that would, that <laughs> Figure would that explain out. why I would turn into a T-Rex. So. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you might actually visually be a T-Rex in on, on Stevie's world right now. <clears throat> but yeah, Star so, means I love you in Dinosaur. In summation, we just really want isolation to be good. Yeah. And uh, so let's move on now. Do the swipe and transition, I guess. Star wipe, maybe. Yeah, oh, star wipe. I can't make a star with my hands. Uh, um, hashtag hold on. wipe. Hold on, here we go, here we go. Okay, star wipe, star wipe, star wipe, star wipe, star wipe. <laughs> and done. Yeah, look it out. Who needs, <laughs> who needs a <laughs> Windows Movie Editor or anything like that? Ugh. Who needs Tony Vegas? So, um, we got professional shit right here. Yes, we do. That's uh, I don't want to go too long because last last episode was two hours. I don't think we need to do that. But yeah. uh, I'll show and... my picture that I did for this episode, though. Okay, do that, and then we'll go into the plugs. Okay, so I did a picture last week when we were recording, and mm. I did this one about the subject matter um, while we were recording this. It's a picture of all of us as alien tongues. If you're familiar with the oh design gosh. of the aliens. Oh my gosh. Keep talking. Oh, keep talking so we can see. As you can see, it goes me, and then inside that mouth is Scotty, and inside his is Brett, and then (laughs) inside his is just a normal tongue. But we're all one big alien family. Alien centipede. Alien (sighs) centipede. Is that, are we immigrants? (laughs) No, you're just (laughs) part of my body, I guess. I, I, I guess that's a lot a, less weird. This is a weird insight into my psyche because that was last week's picture as well. We were all sort of one mass lump. Yeah, and it said meat all over the place. Maybe you're Ridley Scott with all of his like oh, fat, yeah, maybe, yeah. Uh, Freudian nonsense going on in his movies. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um. So we'll do some plugs now. Uh, Brett, what do you have to plug? Uh, just my Tumblr and my Twitter at the moment. Just Suzaku Rainmaker, uh, both Tumblr and Twitter. Uh, the site and the forums, of course, sega-ax.com. Um, that's pretty much it. I don't have a lot going on <laughs> nowadays, really, aside from this. Cool. Um, and being sick, would you like to plug Advil or anything? Uh, no, I didn't. Act- I haven't actually taken anything. I'm going oh, okay. full on Iron Man here. Okay. Well, d- don't plug anime. Mm. Don't Everybody, watch Kill the Kill. Gets, gets oh no, enough. God, he's doing the anime plug. Ah, anime gets plugged uh, enough. We don't need any more plugging. Yeah, good. Um, and okay, I mean, I'll plug anime up. And I'm not talking about on podcasts. <laughs> oh, uh, okay, uh, Stevie, what do you have to plug? <laughs> uh, Presspauseradio.com. I've got a couple of reviews coming out. Payday two. I also did forced. Um, which is a an all right one. We'll find out. Yeah, what we, I think. we knew we knew all about it last shut week. Up, shut up! But Addicts.com is some cool things going on. Uh, some features should be coming up soon. Um, uh, and yeah, oh, my Twitter is the Stevie Grant, and that's where you can find all of my stuff as well. So yeah, do that and. <coughs> Cool. Um, I would like to plug myself on Twitter. My name is Scotty Mofo Show. Uh, I have a YouTube page, which is Scotty Mo. I do unboxings and nonsense. Uh, my band is on YouTube and Facebook and all that stuff. We are Wine and Spirits. Um, our website's wineandspiritmusic.com. And uh, we do have this on iTunes for the moment. It's going to be under the Kids Table um, podcast yeah. feed. So if you guys aren't subscribed to that, Subscribe to it all uh, now and listen to some old episodes too of the kids' table. Yeah. But, and uh, one of the f- a future one that will be coming out soon. Yeah, that's going to be coming up. Um, we won't always be under the kids' table thing. Uh, that's just we need five so, episodes to get yeah. onto iTunes. So, so we'll have our own soon, but we just wanted something so that people didn't have to sit down and watch us the whole time, but get to listen to our 
tantalizing voices as well. Um, or zany radical antics. Yeah. So yeah, uh, go ahead and um, subscribe to the Kids Table on iTunes. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is Sega Addicts Videos. And uh, we do have some reviews coming up. Uh, this week we're going to be having, probably by the time this is up, hopefully, the Sega 3D Classics that were released on the eShop by me and Anthony is going to be up. My Doki Doki Universe uh, review is coming soon, and also the review of Sonic iOS, Sonic 2 on iOS, uh, and more things to come. So oh, Also, I mm. forgot I'd like to plug... Um... I would like to plug Meatloaf's Bat Out of Hell album. It's very good. Why in the hell? Well, if I could plug Kill the Kill. Do I even? No! Uh, <laughs> I'll kill that kill the, anime conversation. Kill the Kill with Meatloaf as a soundtrack. I dig that. Okay. You can have a common ground. Sure. And I'd also like to plug my birthday. Uh, that's coming up <laughs> oh, as well. Oh, when is your birthday? <laughs> I'm is just kidding. No. After this episode. Uh, it's uh, January 14th. We should Aww. sing Happy Birthday, Brett. Happy oh, birthday oh, to you. Son of a bitch. Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Let me sleep bitch. on it. Happy <laughs> birthday, dear Scotty. Yeah. Happy birthday to my face. you. Like a bad out of hell. I'll be gone when the morning comes. No, no. 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 <laughs> Let me eat my cake. <laughs> Don't see me, man. <laughs> All right, oh, so. how did you get a cake in your room so fast? Because it's my birthday. How did you not? How did you not set your sideburns on fire with that highly realistic candle? Yeah. I've just the magic of my face. <laughs> um. Anyway. <laughs> uh. Yeah. So that's. I don't know. I, actually, let's play a fun game. How old do you guys think I'm gonna be? Because no one can ever guess based on my 26. looks. Twenty-six. Nope. Higher or lower? Brett? Hmm. 20. I'd say 20, definitely. Uh, 20 definitely 20? 20? Thanks. I don't look like I'm a teenager anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, at, I'm at like uh, 23. I'll go 23. Uh, no, I am going to be 29. God damn! Whoa! <laughs> yeah, so, right here. 29? 29? Holy so, shit. It's for fans of New Girl. Um, yeah, I'm an old piece of crap. <laughs> but uh, I wish Josh was still writing for the site. I wouldn't feel as bad. <laughs> oh God! Yeah, he. I forget how. Old He's the same age as me, or huh. around that, or something. Whatever, He's it doesn't matter. Guy. We're talking about my birthday. This is fucking irrelevant. I think he's younger than you. <laughs> oh really? Shut up. That's not making me feel good. <laughs> old man Morrison. <laughs> yeah, that's all I wrote on the calendar. Is Scott is old for the house calendar? Oh God. So um, uh, yeah. But uh, thanks for listening and watching, guys. Um, I'm glad that. Oh, some we people... forgot to uh, plug the new writers we got. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Come oh, on. and let's plug uh, Alex Daly as Twitter. Alex. So Alex. Yeah, here. Alex is on Twitter. Um, it's his name, Alex uh, Delia. It's Alex D E L I A. And um, yeah, Brett, go ahead and welcome the new writers. Yeah, we got uh, two new writers. We got Thomas Avantis and Chris Gooch uh, helping us out now. So they just started this week. So glad to have them on board. Welcome, guys. <laughs> You're in for a wild ride. Yep. <laughs> oh God! <A> wild ride. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I actually backed up from that. <laughs> <laughs> this you isn't 3D. That. That, should be, that should be how you say goodbye. You should say goodbye. <laughs> we should all do that, I think. Okay, oh, let's do that, yeah. All right, so... Uh, no, so with me... Say good, good, but I, because we'll be showing them our eyes. Oh, my gosh. Oh, fucking hell. It's, so for a second, it sounded like you said we're showing MRIs, like we're doing MRI tests. <laughs> yeah, let's do MRI tests. <laughs> That's a good I idea. That's a good way to end the podcast. Um, all right, so uh, with me today on the Sega Addicts After Hours, I had Brett Hatfield. Yeah. And I tried to do a bow. I can't do it. Yeah, you might hit your head time. off of something. Yeah, and, uh, my hobo tent. And also, oh yeah, do you want to talk about how you upgraded your house real quick, Brett? Yeah. Or is that... Oh yeah. It's kind Let's of awesome. Let's Brett's, stole someone plug Brett's cardboard shit. box. Yeah, yeah, I kind of shanked somebody in an alleyway. Killed the guy yeah. next to him. Yep. Yeah, stole his corkboard, stole his stuff. I will podcast And he was a member of the Sega Addicts, too, so he got his business yeah. card. Yeah, we killed Spin. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, 
World Podcast for Food. I have to feed at least three starving hookers and a blue hedgehog. So, yeah, if anybody can help me with that, that'd be great. God bless you. And Send Hockerman. emails to SegaAddicts.com if you want yeah. to help. <laughs> and help fulfill his sick fantasies. That's right. That's hashtag right. fuck Hockerman. Oh, God's the hashtag. No, none of that. Hashtag All right. everything. Okay. Um, Good. And uh, and also with me today was Stevie Grant. I'm going to go to fucking bed. <laughs> and I have been your host, Scotty Moe. So... Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. I don't even think I'm doing it right because I can't really do it properly. Doing it right for America. Yeah, I hope so. Oh, Internet Scott. and technology. All right, Scott, <laughs> stop. Oh, and, and okay. And one other thing is, I was gonna try to get a theme song together, and um, but that'll probably be something we can only hear. How in about the... this? Go. It's sick addicts after dark. After after dark. As much as you want the name of the podcast to be After Dark, and as much as you want it to be porn and sex talk, Stevie, <laughs> not that. It's called After Hours. <laughs> I think addicts uh, after hours, after after hours, <laughs> da, 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 after hours, da, 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 Will you make me so happy for the rest of my life? Will you take me away? Will you make me warm up? I gotta know right now. Ba, 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 ba. Before we go any further, do you love me? Will you love me forever? Ba, 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 I can't I'm tell you any longer no longer. I can tell you're not going to stop anytime soon. I swear to my mama, I'm a little bit scared. I love you to the end of time. I swore I would love you to the end of time. Oh, no. So now I'm praying for the end of time. So hurry up and arrive. Because if I got to spend another minute with you, I don't think that I can really survive. I never break my promise or forget my vow. <laughs> but God only knows what I could do right now. I'm praying for the end of time. That's all that I can do. Woo! Woo! Du, 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 du. Praying for the end of time. So I can end my time with you. <laughs> when it was far away and it was so much better than it is today. And it was long ago. It never felt so good. It never felt so right. We were going right in the middle on the edge of long ago. And it was far away. And it was so much better than it is today. Brown. 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 <laughs> Sweet fucking Jesus. That sure was something. <laughs> that needs to be <laughs> That needs to be our intro this week. Oh, okay. I'll somehow edit that in. That'll probably end up as an outtake after the thing is done. Oh, is that oh, that I, forgot. I forgot what I was saying in the first place. <laughs> I don't even know. Oh, it was a you jingle. Zero, homie. Right, yeah. So that is a jingle for our new podcast and every day, every no and every episode will start off with the whole every day. <laughs> every day <laughs> we'll hear that. Day. That's gonna be my alarm clock now. No, in every episode that should be the entire intro, that entire minute or whatever it was. <laughs> oh well, that was longer than a minute, <laughs> I'll tell you right now. <laughs> I'm just I'm just kinda sad that I didn't have an I my I didn't come up with my idea for the podcast name until it was way too late. What was it? Uh, oh, Sega Addicts Infinite Climax. Um, I was listening to the Bayonetta soundtrack. And, uh, oh, that's cool, yeah. <laughs> but I'm, I'm just going to say, when I started doing that joke and I went into Paradise by the Dashboard Light, 
I thought I would stop it, and then I thought, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to do the hot rest of the whole <laughs> I thing. Tell. I could tell. I was like, I was, I was just going to let you go, and I was like, he's not going to stop anytime it's a long, soon. It's a long song, dude. So, that was beautiful. It's uh, a very long song. I hope you but I also just up know, up. I know all of that song, so I was just like, I can do this. So I think. I <laughs> So I did it all, guys. All right, 